Hi, my name is Dylan Jones and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session I will provide a brief overview of the Trimble R2 GNSS receiver. The Trimble R2 receiver is a versatile GNSS rover solution for geospatial applications ranging from submeter to centimeter accuracies and this will support any GIS or survey workflow. You can purchase the R2 to fit your needs. For productive data collection, you might want the receiver to have GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and BIDO capability. Therefore, you won't be limited to just GPS satellites. The R2 is also capable of using RTX and OmniStar corrections. These are both options that require a purchase subscription. If you are using a base station to receive RTK corrections, you will want to include the option for UHF radio. Similar to other Trimble receivers, the R2 has a web user interface that will allow you to configure the receiver over a web browser. Another great feature of the R2 is the ability to work with third-party applications due to its built-in NMEA output capability. We will talk a bit more about the R2 features later in this video. You can easily collect data by pairing with devices such as smartphones, tablets, or Trimble handhelds. Whatever software you use to collect your data, the R2 will more than likely support it. Keep in mind, if you are using a third-party application, you will need to configure your NMEA settings through a program such as GNSS Status Utility. Now let's take a look at the R2, starting with a quick unboxing. Each piece of equipment that is purchased through Frontier Precision is set up and tested to ensure your experience with the device is as flawless as possible. We would like to ensure you that through our setup and testing, we have kept your equipment in the condition we received it. As I tilt the box forward, you will see the R2 on the left and the accessories on the right, all in original packaging. I will start with the R2. Notice as I rotate the receiver, you will see the power button on front, battery compartment on the side, and USB input on the back. Also notice the size of the device. It is both relatively lightweight and small for the kind of quality data you can collect from this receiver. On the bottom you will find the threading for pole mount, radio antenna port, and serial number. The battery compartment simply slides out by squeezing the two black clips. Properly slide the battery holder back into place and secure it by pushing in with both thumbs. This kit comes with two lithium ion batteries. They are the same batteries used by the Trimble R8 survey receiver. You can see the part number located in the top left of the window. You should get somewhere between 4 and 5 hours from internal battery in rover operation. It is also possible to power the R2 via an external power source connected through the micro USB port. Insert the battery by lining up the positive and negative ends as indicated on the battery holder then slide into the receiver until you hear and see it click in. Power on the receiver by pushing the power button until the LED illuminates. A solid LED indicates the receiver is on and has a healthy battery. A fast flashing yellow LED indicates low power, while a slow flashing green LED indicates that the R2 is currently receiving corrections. The next accessory is a USB adapter cable. One end contains a female USB type A that you can plug any regular USB cable into. The other end is a male mini USB that will plug into the R2. The next item is the dual battery charger. This charger will charge your R2 batteries one at a time, and it will charge the battery with the most charge first, giving you more time in the field. You may also use this charger to charge up other Trimble batteries such as the R10 and S series total stations. Simply slide the battery into the front of the charger and make sure that the contacts are aligned. The last item that came in this kit is the power supply and power cord. Note that although the charging station is included, the power supply and power cord need to be ordered separately. The part number for North American countries is provided on the screen to the upper left. Insert the power cord into the back of the charging station to supply power to charge the batteries. 
Now let's take a closer look at the charging station. When a battery is inserted, you will be given a status in the form of an LED light on the charger. Check the R2 user guide for technical information about the LED charging indicators. Also protect the battery from deep discharge. A battery that has reached deep discharge level cannot be recharged and must be replaced. To avoid this, fully charge all new batteries before use. Keep all batteries on continuous charge when not in use. Do not store batteries in the receiver or external charger unless power is applied. If you store batteries, fully charge them before storing and then recharge them every three months. Now I'd like to provide a quick overview of the R2's external features and accessories. Power on the receiver by pushing the power button until the LED illuminates. This might take a couple seconds. Use the USB port on the back of the system to externally charge or to connect to another device. Squeeze the battery door latches to open, then push in with both thumbs to click back into place. On the bottom of the receiver you will find the 5 8 inch threading to mount the receiver on a range pole or backpack system. The receiver has an IP65 rating to handle inclement weather and falls up to 2 meters on concrete. Mounting the receiver is a nice feature to allow you to get consistent horizontal and vertical measurements as well as keep your hands free and reduce fatigue. In order to receive RTK corrections from a base station, you will want to make sure that you have purchased the 450 MHz UHF radio option. The radio antenna port is found on the bottom of the receiver. Attaching the antenna is easy. Unscrew the plastic port cover with a coin. Once removed, screw on your antenna. The antenna is an additional add-on part that will be purchased separately, and I have indicated the part number on screen. To turn off the R2, press and hold the power button until the LED turns yellow. Release and you should see the light turn off. We want you to look forward to some of our upcoming or existing tech talks on the R2 GNSS receiver, including how to access the web user interface, R2 configuration and GNSS status for use with mobile devices, updating firmware, and streaming NMEA data to a Windows mobile device for use with third-party applications such as ArcPad. And this concludes our overview of the Trimble R2 GNSS receiver. We hope that you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thanks.